Welcome back to day two of the group stages here in Wuhan, China. We're gearing up for our next bout between Longzhu Gaming and the Gigabyte Marines. Now, a wise man on Reddit once said, meta doesn't define the game, players do. And few contenders at the 2017 World Championships embody that truth more than Longzhu top laner Khan or the Gigabyte Marines jungler Levi. Two larger than life figures who dictate the game the way they want to. They play on their terms and their terms alone, destroying all who cross their path with a relentlessly aggressive play style. In just a few moments, we'll see what happens when two unstoppable forces go up against each other. Brace yourselves, Solo Q. You will without a doubt feel the effects of this matchup for weeks to come. Now it's time to send it over to the casters to get us into the games. Gentlemen, get away. Hello, I am Clayton Captain Flowers Reigns, joined by Chris Papa Smithy Smith and Martin Deficio Lunga for the first time here on the World's 2017 group stage. Gentlemen, I am excited. Welcome to the Casta Desk. Thank you very much, my friend. I am excited to be here. It is going to be a wonderful series of games, and we are counting down towards the fight between the LCK and GPL champions, Longju and Gigabyte Marines, who are getting ready for their second game of the group stage. Let's go ahead and check out the starting lineups. First and foremost, on the blue side, it's Longju. With Khan in the top lane, Cuz in the jungle, BDD mid, Prey on AD carry, Gorilla supporting, and Coach Jungsoo Kim. Of course, fighting from the red side. In this game, it is the Gigabyte Marines, and I can't wait to see what they're going to show. Top lane, we have Archie, Jungle, we have Levi, mid is Optimus, AD carry is no way, support is Nevan, and of course, coach Tinekun. The man who is uh, bringing up some interesting strategies and has even revealed certain things uh, on his Facebook page, talking about how uh, this might be the game where they bring out a strategy no one has ever seen before. And yesterday was a pretty good start with that, Deficio, so we have no idea what to expect. Lane swap, that's probably the minimum. The maximum, that's the exciting part. And those strategies are why Gigabyte Marines was able to prove that they will be a force to reckon with in Group B. They beat Fnatic in what was the shortest game on day one. And it was, of course, a really smart lane swap strategy that came into surprise Fnatic. And obviously, there are answers to lane swaps in the current meta. But if you're not used to playing against this kind of style, it is difficult. There was another thing happening as well. There was a Nocturne in the jungle. They went uh, pretty crazy. And that's the thing. They always set up around Levi. That seems to be the consistent thing. No way, at the end of the day, had a big performance on the Tristana as well. But the Levi focus strategy, getting him all the experience, a 5 minute 10. Level six for that Nocturne Paranoia. They know where their bread is buttered, and it's around Levi. Not the only tactic that these guys have ready either, like you guys mentioned That's in a just scary a moment part. ago. Yep. They said they've got all sorts of good stuff cooked up for this series. Not just this series of games oh. that they're going to be playing in groups, but all throughout the whole thing. Yes. They want to go the distance with How these crazy do you plans. prepare for this? How do you prepare for this team when you have no idea what they're going to play? Like, we looked at solo queue yep. accounts. There was some Mordecai, some Ergot in there as well. And we're like, okay, that might happen, but where are they going to put them? Is it mid lane, bot lane, top lane? We don't actually know. I'm really looking forward to seeing what this special strategy is, because earlier today on social media, Coach Tinny Kuhn was talking yep. about how we're going to deploy something, the likes of which you've never seen before against Longju. It got a lot of traction. Stuff. Yeah, we've seen some crazy stuff over the course of competitive League of Legends history. we got a long road to go back. But to say something like that, that gravity of a statement, should be fun to see it play out. I mean, yesterday's game plan was right up there with the Heimerdinger jungle I cast so many years ago. Meta breaking is awesome. The Galio band, though, to start things off here for Longjo, I think is super yep. smart because guess what? Even level one, Galio has wave clear, a great 1v2 champion. And when you're lane swapping, 1v2s usually go hand in hand. And the bands should be fairly standard from Gigabyte Marines. The Talia coming in as well, remove that from BDD is very smart. Obviously one of the champions he is amazing on and it's fantastic for Longjo. And you think about what she's good at. Talia has the global, the ability to roam top was the core strategy of Longju to help Khan out in the top lane. So Galio gone, Talia gone. They're actually both bans against BDD, even if they're one of these. Galio gone, Talia gone, Jace and Kalista also taken off the table by the Marines, while Lulu and Janna have been removed by Longju as the first pick is Zaya for the Korean representative. That seems very standard. That must be like a Cho'Gath support. <laughs> <laughs> there is that, always that possibility. An Optimus, of course, <laughs> OP to miss, depending on who you are, could be taking the Karma mid. So who are you? What do you say? I say Optimus. Uh, I say Optimus. Too. Come on, Transformers. It's right there. So we get the Zaya as well. Rakan is available and was not taken by Gigabyte Marines. And Rakan is one of these uh, special supports who can be a playmaker, but also build art and sensor. They are fairly rare in the current meta. Most of them are very defensive shielding supports. This guy can engage, and Gorilla wants to engage. And of course, Rakan will be a denial to the Zaya Rakan, the most beloved bot lane in the world. Prey and Gorilla get the lovers bot lane. Not necessarily a common pick for them, 
in Korea. But of course, we know the power of Zaya. It was first pick Jarvan yesterday, first pick Zaya, and they get the Jarvan anyway. Definitely a solid first half of the draft for Longju so far here. Gigabyte Marine's gonna round out their first half by picking up that Tristana that was almost able to find a pentakill yesterday. Slightly denied by his own teammate, but maybe he can do it again here today. Yeah, also Tristana is the best available AD carry against Jarvan specifically. Like, not only can you jump out of that Cataclysm, you can also deny he's engaged if you're very quick. So, it's a smart choice, but I'm kind of scared to see Longju get Zaya Rakan and the flex pick Jarvan. Like, that's a lot of power picks for these guys. But you look down Gigabyte Marines, and it feels like the end of their draft is more than some of their parts. Even yesterday, we were like, okay, you're showing us that Galio's going top lane, that's weird. They made a lot of reveals early that didn't necessarily cement the final five. I look at Gigabyte Marines and I say, okay, so far, pushing. Pushing is there in terms of the draft. They play with a very fast pace in the early game, and long as you do as well. So fighting fire with fire is a good choice. All right, going into the second part of the picking phase now with Sejuani, Syndra, Cassiopeia, and Maokai all banned away. Gigabyte Marines have one more to make before giving over the next two picks to Longju Gaming. Picking between a couple of different things here, they go with the Lucian. Cassiopeia already banned away. Could have been a pick against Lucian specifically. Famous last words, but maybe the strategy no one saw coming was straight up League of Legends, guys, because so far <laughs> it's dangerously meta on the red side. But we're still again waiting for the jungle pick for Levi, which is the big one. Lucian adds on to your pushing lane sure. part. You just said before here, like normally he pushes every single mid lane early on at least, and especially with Talia already being banned away. I'm I really wonder if we're going to get like a counter jungling pick from Levi that can just abuse these lanes. Throw a name out there to fish here. I mean, so something we have seen from teams with like a lot of pushing lanes, like there are things like mid lane. You got like Kane has been used as well. Oh, 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 the karma that was picked up at first is so good at taking these slow melee champions like the Cho'Gath and the Mordekaiser and getting them in there. And you know this what the is cool. You know what the delicious thing is? We had one Mordekaiser in Korea. It was Khan himself playing as a counter pick to the Renekton. This champion works in a 1v2, and I think we're yeah. getting spicy. I, I, I'm once again smelling a bit of a lane swap because Cho'Gath, while he's not an amazing jungler by any means because it takes a lot of time before he really comes online, he does offer wave clear in the early game. So if your job is to hold in a lane swap with your top laner, Shogath actually works there. It's not a carry pick for Levi, it's actually completely different. So I, I'm thinking the lane swap for now, but the guys of course could just take the 1v1 lane. I mean, lane swap has to be on your lips. It is RG, has played it in Soul. It's one of those ones we saw. The Mordekaiser and the Urgot were the edge meta picks that we thought, what if, what if, what if? The what if starts now. The what if for this game should be absolutely amazing to watch. Mordecai's are something that no one expected. Well, I'm sure a couple people probably expected we it. Saw it in by and large, yep, we saw did it. see it in solo queue, fair enough. But heading into this game, Gigabyte Marines are not disappointing already as we're loading in. Teams take to the stage. Only moments remain before the barriers go down on the summoning platforms, and everybody's out to see who will reign supreme between Longju, the current champions in Korea after winning the summer split, and the Gigabyte Marines. And now we get Levi on Cho'Gath. We said in Champ Select, this is not the, the big carry jungler. Yesterday, he had the Nocturne, and it was fantastic to watch him you know, double jungle early, rush to level six, and have this super, super carry performance. It's gonna be different. And let's talk about how long you should approach this because we watched yesterday a four point, five point defense very defensively. Whenever you're against what ifs, I really like barreling in as five. It's the same as if you're in solo queue, you go in as five against, say, a Blitzcrank, expecting an invade yourself. Longju are going to get extra information, as we had a bit of information about Lever. Yeah, they have to try to get a little bit of control over this jungle. You can see on your screen right now the numbers that Levi put up yesterday. Absolutely insane performance on that Nocturne, thanks to his team giving him so many resources. Longju wants to shut that down this time around. So we are going back to the old lane swap meta, where you used to go in and place this ward all the way at the enemy in hip turret between the tier 2 tower and hip turret right there. Simply to spot if someone is moving from base down to this bottom lane. 
They, we, we really old school now. We, what's yeah, always they really are in. going all the way back in time to keep an eye on who's going to be walking down that lane so they can make sure they respond in time. Let's see. This looks like the same kind of start as before where Levi and Archie will double jungle. But Longshu looking uh, like a team that wants to steal a blue buff. Longshu looking like a team that watched Gigabyte Marine's game yesterday yeah. and knows these kind of tricks. Important point, there was a vision on the blue buff as it was started. There's information to the side of the Gigabyte Marines that this has been taken away. Yes, understand the fundamentals of playing against a different strategy. Cheese, innovation, whatever you want to call it. It's what Longshu's been able to do day upon day. All right, look at this. Thing. Oh. So we got no way in the mid lane with the Tristana. Optimus is going top lane with TP Lucian. And the, <laughs> we have a duo jungling happening from the Karma and the Mordecai. So, and Levi are now invading the jungle on his own. And ladies and gentlemen, none of those two people you just mentioned have smite. Levi the jungler is invading, like you say, so they're trying to find experience wherever they want. For now, Jarvan, of course, is going to be pushed out of lane. Looking at the blue buff, it is going to be smited away by Levi. So Archie is now sitting with 50% experience here. So not all the way to level two just yet, but he has support next to him. So these guys are now playing in the bottom lane together. And remember that Mordekaiser gets the bonus EXP even if he's in a duo lane. It's part of the champion's kit. And now it's going to be BDD jumped on Levi using the flash, not quite able to find the rupture. BDD gets himself away, but it's both summoner spells. Yeah, BDD staying towards the bottom side, meaning that there was no chance for Levi to instantly silence him. Meanwhile, Longshu, they want to kill that bot lane. Going for a turret dive, both level one. Here we go. See if they can do it. Gorilla's able to find the knockout. The damage coming out. They grab the first blood onto Archie and make it to Longshu. And that's the there. counterpoint. Remember, yesterday we saw the attempt at the dive, but it was bot. Longju do it for you. They draw all five. They'll get the turret. There's no reinforcement. Three, five minutes. So even though Lucian gets some time, they cannot match the pace. And the most important thing here for Longju is the fact they build up this very big minion wave you see on the screen. And as soon as the wave is hitting the tower, they are instantly diving, stopping Archie from getting experience. Teleport comes in from Archie, but now he's found himself in a very rough situation. The turret is gone, Archie is alone, and the damage is there. Prey grabbing himself, kill number two. And just teleporting back in has such a high element of risk. We've seen so many top players in Korea, Huni most famously camped, and they left the turret. They didn't DPS it as fast as possible. It looks so inviting for Archie to come there. He said, I have the flash, I'll be okay. He was far from okay. He's trying to return to favor here. Khan sidestepping away from the rupture, keeping himself just fine for now. Khan's enjoying that old school lane swap top lane experience as well. Very little CS, having multiple people trying to bother him while he gets the very little that he has available. Not a great game for him, but a fantastic showing from Longju in the bottom so far. And the crazy thing is, this is more of a role swap than a lane swap, because there was technically two members with the Mordekaiser in the bottom lane, but that is technically a duo lane you can actually run. Uh, sadly for... Gigabyte Marines, Longshu understands that when there is a level one Mordekaiser who can't really get to the wave, you can just tower dive and kill him. And consider also that Jarvan went top, got enough experience for level two, and that's when the teleport came in. He's level two Jarvan, he's got the level one Maokai with Sapling that we saw yesterday. Another crucial factor is we're now going to have a Mordekaiser who's probably going to be pretty slow to get the items going. One of Mordekaiser's big points is the ability to pick up the dragon, get the ghost of the dragon in there. They've already lost their bot lane turret, so Drake control is super difficult for Gigabyte Marines to bring back. Falling behind like this early as the Marines, definitely not where they wanted to see themselves. This is a team that do, does experimental strategies. They go out of their way to come up with different ways to play the game, but those methods can quickly find you putting yourself in a hole if you fall behind. And every scientist knows that when you run those experiments, the first one's not always the one that's going to hit big. It right. hit yesterday. The second one here is seeming like a bit more of a mulligan. A 2,000 gold disadvantage. Pre five minutes, it might even get bigger here as well. Here's the chase. Gorilla definitely looking to build that lead right now. Cuz coming around as well, takes a big swig out of the keg, throws down another one. Archie trying to keep himself alive a little bit longer. Why Has BDD the heal. BDD showing up just to make sure he can grab some assist money or make it the kill. No, nope, Cuz looks like he might take it instead, but BDD with the kill. This laning phase is like done already, and we're only like five minutes into the game. We have Zion in the mid lane now, Rise in the bottom lane. Optimus, he's still trying to push this tower, but uh, it's barely taking any damage. You know how we have games where we try to incorporate some information for the viewers at home for solo queue? Uh, so no solo queue game has ever looked quite like this one. No. The laning phase, which can extend in solo queue, was completely absent here. We swapped around again and again. We have a 0-3 Mordekaiser. 
this has been a barn burn. And I gotta correct you there, Papa Smith, because I have had solo queue games with the Mordekaiser dying like three, four times in the <laughs> early game. So I've seen some of this before. Uh, also ended up in a loss for the Mordekaiser. And uh, Archie right now is not looking like a guy who's uh, about to win the game. Optimus with a nice flash away from the knockup from Gorilla, who tries to come top to help alleviate some of this pressure on Takan. Knocking that summoner spell off of the Lucian may open up opportunities here in the future. For now, it's still a long Zhu game. Four to zero over the Marines, two and a half thousand gold up. I just don't know what Gigabyte Marines has to do to get themselves back into the game at this point. It's looking pretty dire. Yeah, exactly. Like when you have these very special, unique strategies, you rely a lot on the early game to go your way. That's kind of where you're surprising people. Because once you get to late game, it's a standard game. That, that will not be different. The fact that Gigabyte Marines have not managed to actually get ahead now and just fallen really far behind means that we're now playing on Longshu's turn. And there were a lot of criticisms about Fnatic yesterday, saying, oh, they were surprised by the lane swap. Sure, they're set up around the lane swap. It seemed a bit late, but they seem to know what to do. Dive bot lane, try to punish the two members there. The extra barrier we saw from Longshu was them actually invading for those super deep wards, 2015, 20, early 2016 style. That was kind of the capper. It gave them the extra information. They executed cleaner. And this could have been yesterday with Fnatic and Gigabyte Marines, but just ends up being Longshu doing it better here and reaping the rewards. You've got to respect Longju for doing their homework on this one too, saying, hey, look, Gigabyte Marines, they like to play this really weird lane swap throwback. We need to be prepared for it. We need to get those. I like down. to think that the coach has kept consistent notes for the last three, four years and just tabs back through, gets back to 2015. okay. But you notice this. It happens with, say, when Evelyn comes back into the meta, people forget, wait, you can ward camps, not just control wards, to go along to your sides. And the same thing rings true when the lane swap meta, which Gigabyte Marines solo are trying to bring back, comes explodes back into favor. It's nicely done there. It's Optimus is here, but so is Levi. Oh, two versus two, making a three versus two. Optimus now gonna be the one who's caught out. Ignited, might be brought down here. Knockup gonna be dodged away from, but Khan still got the dunk, grabbing himself the kill. Levi just gonna have to back away. Cuz was there for the reinforcements. Five and no, now the kill score. Things looking rough to this year. Yeah, we definitely see Longshu with uh, great decision making here. Very quick on these calls, knowing exactly how to punish and Obviously, some mechanical plays going in their favor. Right there, Optimus needs to be able to dodge the knockup from the Java. And if he wants to actually try and take this fight, side to Pimp didn't happen. And that is one of the reasons he went down. Meanwhile, in the bottom lane, the Mordekaiser is farming. Uh, he is sitting with 60 CS. So it's not terrible in terms of their creep score, but. Uh, <laughs> 0-3 is kind of rough. The itemization is going to be interesting. I imagine Rylai's and then just situational is where he'll go. It's always kind of been the Mordekaiser item. Post rework helps with the ghost of the Drake that, okay, they're probably not set up to take. And now we see oh. some damage bot lane and gorillas here again. I don't know how well this is going to end for Archie. Again, taking a lot of damage there from BDD. Forced to back himself up. 0-3 and 0 on the Mordekaiser so far. I also love that Gorilla is like, I'm just gonna go Moby Boots really early. This is clearly a game where the laning phase is done. I'm just gonna move around as fast as possible. And he's in every single lane. Like, so this is a play from top here. Optimus needs to be able to dodge this knockoff here from Khan. He gets actually hit by it. So now he's stuck in place taking even more damage. And he flashed from the previous gank, you'll remember, when he flashed with the culling up, so Khan dunks him down. Somehow this game has become a hodgepodge of something from every single season. I mean, the, the pure roaming from level one was kind of a season one, season two oh, strategy. Oh, yeah. Throwback to Heart of Gold and Philosopher's Stone. You buy the gold generation items and you walk around the map from level two. Well, he's got the gold generation, he's got the fast boots, and uh, yeah, trying to make plays wherever he goes. It's kind of a counterpoint to yesterday where he kind of had to sit in lane as Karma and die repeatedly. <laughs> <laughs> also yesterday, Gigabyte Marines in that Fnatic game, like, they got so much gold, it was actually insane how quickly they managed to build up this huge lead in that game at 15 minutes at 28,000 gold. And the average every other team during that day was 23,600. So it was insane how quickly they took down towers, got kills, and then stacked up items, especially for the Nocturne and the Tristana. And that's kind of the takeaway here is, is that's everything. That's even the minion kills, because the Tristana was free farming as well. So getting that much collected gold is just very difficult to do unless you really play around maximizing in the early game. Yeah, the reason we show this now is to Kind of contrast it to, yeah, to this game being, well, Gigabyte Marines have not been able to get the same kind of start, are not going to be able to get the same amount of gold. And just look at the pace of the game right now. This isn't that high-powered, high-octane, super-hectic type of style that Gigabyte Marines likes to 
just thrive in. This has been slowed down now by Longju to the point where they're in control. Gigabyte Marines doesn't feel as comfortable taking the driver's seat on this one, and it's just relaxed to a more comfortable pace. Remember that Longju, compared to their compatriots, are on the more aggressive side. They will not be giving up Rift Heralds for free if they can help. Let's see what they can do about this one. Rift Herald already now been secured by the Gigabyte Marines, but they want to get found their way onto RG, who's going to be bursted down. Prey grab the killing spree on that one. Realm Warp comes in. No way. Yes way. Nope. Not quite. Making me a liar already. Gets himself out. No way he was going to die there. Staying safe. <laughs> that was a bit on the nose position. I tried. <laughs> <laughs> Next time. All right. All right. Thanks for pulling me out, guys. As so Archie was dying, real here. You'll, as, you'll get him. You'll get him next time. Bud. As Archie was dying, Crucial Factory did pick up the Rift Tower. It could have gone and been unable to be picked up. Was picked up. There, so at least they have something to show for their day. Oh, oh the here we go. Teleport uh, coming uh, in. TP. Longshu immediately collapsing onto it. Archie looking to get himself out of the way. Harvesters of Sorry keeps him alive for an extra second. Prey going to be going on a rampage. In the back line goes the Chogat, but now he's going to found himself isolated once again by him. Lonesome and deleted by the power of Cuz and the rest of Longju. The dunk comes in, the flashes are forced. Khan gets those summoner spells out as Longju takes a 2-0. Yeah, Gigabyte Marines at the moment. Uh, 5k gold down, not picked up a kill, not picked up a tower. We're actually looking at a potential perfect game and for Longju. Bit of fine text that did pick up a Rift Terror. That was something Does that showing. count, really? Yes, it does for me. Okay. I'm into true perfection. I get the Darcy LCK and bias, what can I say? Oh but for now, at least, <laughs> on screen, it is a perfect game. As we're going to see the replay, and they really like completing teleports, what I'm learning about the Geekbyte Marines. Mean, when you TP flank as a 0-4 Mordecai as an illusion, then you know you are trying really badly <laughs> to force a team fight. Sadly for Archie, he just died instantly, as we've seen in this game a few times. Levi as well will go down. That is actually another thing to highlight about Gigabyte Marines comp in this game. They don't really have a gauge. So if you are trying to play fast and trying to get back in the game by forcing uh, big, you know, skirmishes, you kind of need more engage in your comp. Uh, so it's going to be so difficult to really do anything. And Lodge, it is looking to close out the game as fast as possible. And you mentioned Archie going in and just immediately dying. He's 0-5 and 0 on the Mordekaiser now. And we mentioned earlier how Khan was getting the short end of the stick in the lane swap situation, but if you compare these two top laners in this game, Khan's got 30 more CS, he's 1-0 and 3, he's got his tabbies and he's got his Tiamat, while Archie has a completed pair of Mercury treads and a garage sale of tier 1 starter items. <laughs> yeah, I just, this is nowhere near viable. I like calling it the random sampler, personally. All the right, garage sale fits pretty well. <laughs> the Rift Tower can be plopped down at some point, that's about the only thing you can cheer for. As Gigabyte, Gigabyte Marine, the most valuable item in his inventory. They know Levi's there because they have a ward towards the backside, but they'll continue creeping forward. For now, at least, like you say, the pace lowered a little bit, but uh, the light at the end of the tunnel is uh, definitely flickering for the Gigabyte Marines. Longju, so in control of this game. You can see them moving up into enemy territory, setting down the wards so they can make the picks like this, cause a killing spree for himself now. Longju at the moment, uh, kind of just trying to pick up whatever early towers they can. Uh, we got top lane, one going down, mid lane is still alive, but once you kill the top lane, you can push in that wave and move down to mid after and just put even more pressure. And Prey and Gorilla might look to fight. Prey and Gorilla, so strong this game. 4 0 and 2, 0 0 and 9, 100% oh. kill participation okay. for Gorilla this on the is support. Something. As Archie pops the Rift Herald in the bottom lane, looking to get something They're out hiding. of it. Hiding, get a up. Seeing if maybe he can do something about this while Prey fights for the Raptors up in his own side of the jungle. Gorilla being forced to use the Flash as well. And I want to update real quick because we mentioned earlier, last time we saw the Gigabyte Marines, day number one yesterday, 15 minutes into the game, they had 28,000 gold. Today, they have 20,000. That's 8,000 less than day one, yeah. 3,000 less than the average. It's uh, Longshu sitting above the average today with almost 28,000 here at 15 minutes. A ton of gold on every single member here. Ready to take whatever fight they want because every single champion on their side is just stronger. And there's no completed items really to speak of. The Gigabyte Marines, I guess a Cinder Hulk is really all you're talking about. Does that really count? Uh, you're going to have to start looking <laughs> and being half truths and trying to make things look good for Gigabyte Marines because Cunningham's kind of been through a, a bit of a horror movie here for them. Haven't lost all their structures yet. But haven't claimed any of their own. It's a good positive, you know. Uh, haven't lost a tower yet. I'm reaching to <laughs> All right, Prey in the mid lane, continuing to apply the pressure. And as these item leads that we're mentioning start to become more and more prevalent, as you can see, the Rod of Ages and the Essence Reaver completed on the carries of Longju Gaming. 
as those advantages are built, Longshu is going to get more aggressive, like you talked about, Papa Smithy. This team will eventually say it's time to pull the trigger, and when that time comes, Gigabyte Marines will be in trouble. Absolutely, and you know, coming back to what Deficio was saying, okay, they don't have engaged, so what does Gigabyte Marines comp do? They're really good if they get that Drake, if they set up for a siege with a Dragon, with double AD carry, Karma poke, and movement speed, Cho'Gath to poke around, that works, but okay, you need gold to do that, they certainly don't have that. The other problem right. is, you need the vision as well, Deficio, you need to be able to ward your side. Right now, they have lit up, Longju I'm speaking about, the red side jungle, and there's just no way to set up for any sort of siege on the side of Gigabyte Marines. Exactly, because before you can even get the vision, you gotta be able to push out your lanes. And then Gorilla could be there with a stun. Be and there. Anyone can honestly be there from Longshore's side. They have so much engage with their team here and so much damage at this point in the game. So every single step you need to take before you can actually secure this objective for the Mordekaiser is unavailable for Gigabyte Marines in this game. They can't even push the lanes out. And talking about Gorilla and what Gorilla has done this game, an interesting point that I've noticed, and it goes back to a bit of what you were talking about in Champion Select Officio, the Ardent Sensor possibility on Rakan, and we know that Karma's a champion that uses the item as well, but just because this game has been so unorthodox and everything has been so upside down, neither one of these champions have found it appropriate to rush that out. I love that observation because because the laning phase ended three, five minutes, you're gonna pick up the Moby Boots and be able to roam and get the kills. It's 100% kill for space, Secret Agent Gorilla at 009, but the value of a sight stone when the laning phase is over super early is actually really really high because you don't have the minions giving you all the information there was actually a lot of incomplete information and sight stone trumps the art sense 9-0 longju gaming with an 8,000 gold lead 18 minutes into the game levi seeing if he can grab a rupture onto the bottom lane of longju but they've both got quick enough feet to just walk right out of the way of that one no fear on these guys just because of how far ahead they are. Even if you don't have the flash up on Gorilla, you're not really worried at this point. Prey's got everything. I just don't see a world where they're able to be pushed back at all. I mean, you kind of look at the map, and usually you want to draw a diagonal line where one team owns the side. Right now, the diagonal line maybe includes minions pushing into the secondary turrets. It certainly doesn't include either side of the jungle for the Gigabyte Marines. So they're being starved out, even though Long is doing nothing fast. But don't worry, Papa Spithy, because RG finally has an amp tone. So he's getting closer hey. to a real item. He's sitting on 1800 gold. He's going to get a Rylize when he goes back to base. He's on his way. This is their first crucial power spike for RG. He's walking to it as well. He's actually walking <laughs> on it. Taking his time. I'm getting there eventually. If you, have, if you haven't gotten it yet, you can definitely spare a few more seconds. <laughs> well, he finally gets it. 19 minutes into the game, the Mordekaiser has his first non-boots item completed. Maybe that'll make him a little bit better off, but he's still got one <laughs> hell of a mountain to climb if he wants we, to stand toe-to-toe. As toe -to -toe. the viewers can uh, hear, we are trying very hard to find the positives here for we are. Archie specifically on this Mordekaiser. Usually glass half full play-by-play -play or enough isn't followed by rip-snorting laughter, but that's where <laughs> we're at right now. Sorry, guys. At this point in time, you've just got to laugh through the pain if you're Gigabyte Marines because things have just gone from bad to worse. Now they lose their fifth turret of the game. They're down 10,000 gold, and Baron will be live in 25 seconds. And this, of course, is what will happen if you are like a boom or bust team who is trying to have right. these new strategies that no one else is using. Some of them might work. Some of them will definitely not work. And in this game here, well, Longshu are just too good of a team uh, to actually get too surprised, and Prey might go down. Prey with a nice flash over the wall to keep himself safe. The root comes out, but the shutdown still comes through for oh. no way. Getting Gigabyte Marines on the board. There you go. Everything starts it's with one. Right now. It all starts with one, Deficio. But now, the comeback to the comeback as Levi finds himself rooted up and bursted down. Can't quite take Khan with him. BDD still looking to grab some more damage. Optimus makes the TP in as BDD a bit too far forward. Gonna be forced to flash away. Archie chasing after him. Harvesters of Sorrow on, but the duck comes out. Optimus gets taken down, and BDD goes on a killing it's spree. The root on the like. Archie. Rylize isn't gonna do a thing. Zero and six as Longshu goes up to 12. And this one, 11,000 gold lead at 20 minutes. Looks like you have so many items that Prey going down is by no means an abortion of any of this aggression. They turn onto the Baron, 20 minutes, 30. It's not gonna be a contest for Gigabyte Marines. Longshu knows this is pretty much free money. They're doing 
pretty much nothing to secure the back end of the pit because they know that they don't have to worry about it. The whole jungle is warded. They've done the proper steps to prepare. The Dusk Blade first completed <laughs> item on Khan's Jarvan, by the way. This is what happens when you piss off the man who plays carry tops all yep. the time and make him sit under his turret all game. You're going to pay for it. All right. Now we don't have to talk about any sort of perfect game ramifications because Frey, he took too many liberties. They didn't have complete vision over both sides. He went down, but that didn't dissuade long. Uh, he is an ex inexperienced player, so he was obviously just overextended there. <laughs> Happens for the rookies. Let's see in this fight. King by Marines after the one kill uh, on to Prey. Kind of ran out of cooldown. So while Archie did actually join with that crazy Rylai Scepter here, he's not really able to deal enough damage and now. Uh, can't with that dust play there. He's in top lane now. Yeah, Optimus is feeling exactly what that dust blade is for. <laughs> Killing spree there for Khan as he gets the solo kill onto his opponent. Three, zero, and five on this J4. By the way, those are the ingredients to a ghost blade now as the next item he completes. He's not worried about anything else. Just that lethality, that straight 100 to zero from the first. Of course, if you get the first item with lethality, you gotta get the second one as well. The enemy team is not exactly stacking a lot of armor uh, at this point and in the, the game. <laughs> and at the end of the day, it's Cho'Gath in the jungle. He's not going to hit the super tank we see from top lane anytime soon. No. There's a Rylize, but nothing else to talk about from Archie. So you're basically one-shotting everyone on the side of Gigabyte Marines. And uh, any more items, and that's basically all five. Yeah. Oh, by the way, knock, knock, bottom lane. It's Longju as Khan oh. goes on a rampage top side. We don't even get to see it because he kills Archie too quickly. <laughs> Four, zero, and five on the Jarvan. The bottom lane inhibitor turret falls. The inhibitor will go shortly thereafter. They don't even care about going to the other lanes because the Gigabyte Marines can't walk safely through the middle of their own base, and Longju will look to end. There's no TP from Khan, though, so he's stuck in base. It's only 4 vs 4 up here, and uh, Longju decides to step away for now, at least. Oh, that Levi, might. Levi made the mistake of walking up to the wall of his own face! Now he's gonna pay for it, taken out. Longshu are just so threatening at this point. They're here to win and get out, not wasting any time. The fastest game of groups yesterday, I believe it was 24, 26 minutes, something around that, as Gigabyte Marines beats Fnatic. And they might just lose that quickly to Longshu here today. 23 minutes in, the team is on to the second inhibitor turret. No contest on that one. Second inhibitor probably won't tell a different story. Baron up minions now in the bottom lane. One minute left on Baron buff. Longshu, five men strong. Looking to end for real this time. Archie, the flash will keep him alive for now. Losing a good chunk of his HP though. Nexus turret number one gone. Number two, quickly gonna be telling the same story. No way, has to jump out of the way as Archie is rooted and taken down. The damage coming in from Khan. Levi, the next target, not quite gonna be hit by the knockup but Longshu has their sights set on the remaining members. Gorilla finally falls to Levi. Optimus tries to escape back into his own fountain as Longshu pad the stats, take down the Nexus, and defeat the Gigabyte Marines. Master's game of worlds, and when you go big or go home, as the Gigabyte Marines are so wont to do, this can be the reality. They come crashing down back to Earth. They beat Fnatic, they felt so good about that yesterday. But after that, here we see that unfortunately, the other side of the coin is that Longju were able to <laughs> scout out the level one, and from there, it was only going one way. Also gotta say, this was a uh, draft from Gigabyte Marines with a lot less punch in it. Even if they are just succeeding with this, uh, you know, kind of lane swap, kind of roll swap with the Mordecai's in the bottom lane, like, it's still a comp that will take a lot of time before it's actually doing a whole lot. Yesterday with the Fnatic, a game we had a draft from uh, King by Marines where there was a lot of power instantly as soon as you hit level 6 with that Nocturne which happened so early and they could start really making plays. Not the same with this draft here. Longshu obviously responds perfectly in the early game and just shuts it down completely. And you think about it, it was a Siege comp versus an Engage comp. So even if they hit their power spikes, got a couple of Drakes set up, there was still comeback mechanics there. Oh, a lot of side of Longshu. So there was never really going to be the same inevitability. Whereas yesterday, the Drasana got going and you thought, okay, this is going to be the end of the game for the side of the Gigabyte Marines. So it was an entertaining one, but it felt like 10 minutes in, we were kind of watching the clock. Plus, Levi on something that's not that big playmaker, that big exactly, scary exactly. early game like the Nocturne was. Seeing him just sort of jump around on a Cho'Gath and like stomp around. Can you do that one more stuff. time? Jump around? Yeah, you, got the, yeah, okay. you just stomp like around that. like that. But not really what you expect to see from him. But long as you took the lead in Group B with that win, here's Dash and the Analyst to break down exactly how it happened.
Thank you very much, Captain Flowers. I want a Captain Flowers Cho'Gath skin now. Just uh, gonna throw I that one out the there. But Long Zhu with the fastest game of group stages so far, 24-12 total game time here over the Gigabyte mm -hmm. Marines. But at the end of the day, hey, look, the Gigabyte Marines, they delivered on their promise that they're gonna keep bringing out new <laughs> strategies, new picks, and throw curveballs at other teams. But Long Zhu, mm -hmm. not one to be thrown by any of those curveballs. They go ahead and shut them down. Yeah, and I thought that Longju was very well prepared for this, right? They knew exactly what to do against a lane swap. They invaded early. They got control of the bot side. And we're going to watch this because this is actually not that different than what Fnatic was faced with yesterday, even if you switch out some of the champions. Well, it's exactly the way that lane swaps used to be played way back when. You ward your own camp, you see the other side, you invade, you split the map, and the response from Gigabyte Marines here has to be to adapt, to go to the opposite side, but because the turrets have been buffed, you can't do that, so the dive is a response from Longju, and they pull the trigger beautifully. And of course, pulling the trigger was so well executed from them, knowing there was no Choga because of the adaptation, once again, from the Gigabyte Marines, getting in here, making this success successful means that everything that was planned for the Marines goes completely out the window. And as a result of that, there's no way back into this game. Yeah, the wheels fell off a little bit after that as well, trying to teleport back in as level one Mordekaiser and dying. But I don't want to take away too much from the strategy, so to speak, the Gigamite Marines were trying to do. I just want to take away from their execution because I actually like the concept of, hey, get this large wave to crash, help Mordekaiser get some experience in the jungle, power to level six, get a Drake, try and snowball. And there's no way they're pulling this out without practice. They beat a world's team in a scrim for this. I'm almost w with this, I'm almost willing to say because there's no way they pull it out without practice. It just wasn't going to work against Long. I want to take a moment here to turn to you, Rusty. Can you help uh, identify what the exact game plan for Gigabyte Marines is? Can you put it succinctly for us? Yeah, so to put it simply, the Gigabyte Marines love experience. Everything that they do on Summoner's Rift is about maximizing and optimizing what they'll do with experience. Mordekaiser has a passive that shares experience nicely between two people, making mm -hmm. sure that everybody gets the full amount. So if they can double jungle, they can go to a lane together, whoever it was, in this case Karma, they'll all get full experience. So they actually get ahead of the curve in that respect and mm -hmm. unfortunately it didn't work this time but I like the idea of trying to get ahead and experience get level six and then as you mentioned crumbs have a Mordekaiser and a Cho'Gath run around put the clone on them and then nom that person what I didn't like however is how similar this was to the game plan against Fnatic you do the exact same thing a double jungle it's a different champion sure you go bot side and Longshot didn't have to look very far to figure out what Gigabyte Marines were going to do for this one. And it was just a matter of, hey, do the exact same thing Fnatic did, but a little bit better. Yeah, and we're going to talk a fair bit about this because it was somewhat decided on the first four minutes of the game, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. The strategy, so to speak, that the Marines play is mostly the first seven minutes. And then they just play normal League of Legends, whether or not they have a giant goal lead or not. That's how the Triss got fed against Fnatic. So in this instance, right, the Mordekaiser Karma wave clear isn't the same as the Nocturne Galio wave clear that they had yesterday. So it was, as you said, like a just a nerfed version of what they did yesterday against Fnatic. But yeah. it is well, it shows very much that Longzu did do their homework. Yes, they did have the example from yesterday's game, but it requires them to recall back to the lane swap days, to re-practice mm -hmm. that, you know, that method of play it's style gorilla. in order to come up against it's it. It's pretty gorilla. Oh, well, so let's talk about gorilla in this game because I do feel like the way the game broke down, it was a Loved dream it. game for a playmaking support. The early Moby boots, we saw even though he was still only level three, level four, while they were level seven, sevens and eights on the map, he was still happy to be charging from lane to lane to lane and making big plays. Rakan's dream right there. Not just Gorilla, but Rakan getting boots and Spread mobility, helping everybody exactly, puts flowers in everyone's ears as he kills them all on the other side as well. He was having a great time. But this just excites me again still for the group. Not necessarily mm -hmm. because of, you know, oh, hey, I think that Gigabyte Marines can unseat Longzu. I think that Longzu, in a sense, cemented themselves as the top dog in this group, uh, in this group rather, and the one that everyone has to aspirationally look at to mm -hmm. beat. But it makes those other three, that trinity at the bottom, is going to be a very fun trinity to watch. It's still going to be extremely close. We know that Longzu, and even if you draw parallels to SKT when they played against the Marines at MSI, those were the games that weren't even close. They were over in seven minutes. So... Still super excited to watch the Marines play Immortals in our, basically, that's going to be on Sunday. They're changing the landscape of con competitive League of Legends, win or lose. We've got more Worlds action coming your way as Cloud9 hope to pick up their first win at Worlds versus AHQ. Don't touch that browser. They want to kill that bot lane. Going for a turret dive, close level one, here we go. See if they can do it, Gorilla's able to find the knockout, the damage coming out. They grab the first blood on the Archie and make it two. Long 
Raju. Teleport comes in from Archie, but now he's found himself in a very rough situation. The turret is gone. Archie is alone, and the damage is there. <laughs> Okay. 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 No way. Has to jump out of the way as Archie is rooted and taken down. The damage coming in from Khan. Longju pad the stats, take down the Nexus, and defeat the Gigabyte Marine. If you want to follow the best of the Rift, then you need T-Mobile, America's best unlimited network. We've doubled our coverage, so you can stream worlds in more places than ever before. With T-Mobile, don't miss a moment from the first battle, all the way to the lifting of the Summoner's Cup. Another reason why T-Mobile is America's best unlimited network.